Hello, everybody. We are the Lee Benoit Family Band from Rain, Louisiana. Uh, here's, here's our first song we're going to do. It's uh, off of our latest album. It's called Let's Go to Lafayette. In French, Allons à Lafayette. It's an old, old Cajun song written by Joe Falcon. And uh, it's about a man wanting to marry his fiance. And in, way back then, you had to go to Lafayette to get a marriage license. So he's telling her, come on, let's go to Lafayette to get a marriage license so we can get married. Go something like this. <laughs> It is part that I just said, right? <laughs> Didn't you bring your water? water now. Is your spot right here? Or does that make it extra? No, that's me. That's me.
right, folks, uh, here's a song off of our second to latest CD. We call this one Le Gasole, and in English that means the sunbonnet. And it's about my grandmother wearing her sunbonnet when she would work in her garden and walk down the street in the sun. So here's one called Le Gasole. Here's a little song on our third to latest CD. Has a little Irish flavor to it. We call it the Ireland Two Step.
just like that. Here's yet another original song off of our Ma Petite Femme CD. It's called A Land So Far. It's about the deportation of the Acadians in 1755 from Grand Pre down Louisiana and all parts in between. Here's one called A Land So Far in Pays Aussi Loin. Here's a title cut off of our CD called My Little Woman. I wrote this song for my wife right here. 
one called My Petite Farm, My Little Woman. Or something like this. C'est tout fini. Le bal est cassé. It's Sean. Shane. 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 I'm sorry. It does not matter. Just blame on it. I haven't called so many things. No, well, you don't want to be called that. That's wrong. Uh, I got the last name Erasmus, and now he times that are all different. <laughs> now that's a name you can't forget. Erasmus. <laughs> So, and I'm rolling. I'm good dip. Everything's good? Whenever you're ready, Shane. Okay. Oh, where should I look? Just at them? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> well, we're here in Ringan, Louisiana in July 2020, and this is the Benoit, the Lee Benoit family band. And if I could just start by having to you introduce yourselves. My name is Valerie Benoit. I'm Lee's wife. Yep. My name is Lee Benoit. I'm Valerie's husband. <laughs> My name is Megan Benoit, and I'm Lee and Valerie's daughter. I'm Rosemary Benoit, and I'm Megan's wife and Lee and Valerie's daughter-in-law. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It has been an honor thank to you. hear your music. I mean, you. you seem so happy when you play. Our music is therapeutic, man. Oh, yeah. You know, it. it how did you get started as a family band? 
I was born into it. She was. I married she, into it. Yeah. <laughs> Megan's right. been playing the triangle since she's since she could walk. Right. Yeah, and then she's picked up the drums, but she always sang. Yeah. So and just, we uh, in 1994, myself and Valerie started playing cage music full time. I was a rock and roller before that. <laughs> But it just kind of evolved into Cajun. Yeah, I'm a retired paramedic safety man, and in '94 we decided to start playing Cajun music. And uh, when, I, when I picked up the accordion and learned the accordion and, and uh, Cajun music and the history of our culture, I fell in love with it like no other rock and roll music I've never experienced before in my life. Yeah. So we decided to, to go ahead and carry on with it. Yeah. Well, tradition has that pull. You know, there, there's a sense of heritage. You guys are a very traditional band, you know, and I've heard a lot of, a lot of different Cajun groups, and this is a very traditional sound. I mean, I, what, are, what are your thoughts about that? Well, uh, I, I guess in 100 years from now, I would call it traditional. <laughs> but, but a lot of songs we're playing right now are new, original songs. Okay. Yeah, except for that one song that we played this evening was an older, older uh, song. But they sound part of the tradition. They, they sound like they just grew well, right in. I, I guess they do. And, and most of them were written, I'm not a big songwriter, most of them were written by friends of mine. And, uh, but I have written a few songs in my life. Now, well, you've been playing how many years now? How, Cajun music? Uh, just Cajun since 1994. Okay. So whatever that is. <laughs> and, and where have you seen, and this could be for all of you, where, how have you seen the tradition change over time, kind of evolve over time? Got faster. <laughs> Music got yeah. faster. I, I, was, I was exposed to Wayne Toops, and that kind of changed my direction. I was exposed to him, and he, uh, he, he, he changed the genre. And before that, it was Belton Richard, and before that, it was Ari Lejeune, you know, and goes all the way back to Amade, you know, bro, and, you know, Amade Ardouin, and everybody, you know, had a, had a little change in it. But Wayne, it Wayne changed me. You know? how, how did he change? And also, oh, ju just because it was a different, it was different. The music seemed more upbeat to me, more tuned rocked up. up. Yep. Tuned up French music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they were friends of ours, you know. And uh, actually, my wife works in the, in the store, which is the studio where Wayne first recorded uh, MTE Records uh, Master Track Enterprises. And that was the guy J.D. Miller we was mentioning about. He owned us. He started that studio. And you recorded how many albums now? I recorded three with, with them, and I recorded three on my own. But I also recorded with several other artists, including Doug Kershaw and Hadley Cat J. Castillo. Yeah. What was it like working with Hadley Castillo? Oh, it was wonderful. I, I loved Hadley, and Hadley loved me. And uh, we got along well. We spoke French together. It was, it was so nice. And uh, he was a storyteller. You know, and I learned so so much about him. He he took me riding around, and all his stories, all his songs were, were true stories mm -hmm. about his life. Yeah. And he took me riding around in Pacoya, the Pecan, the Pecan Grove where he grew up in, right. and Leonville, the, the the nearest city, in which he wrote a song about Leonville. You know, and where he would describe all the businesses and the, the corn, the, the factories and the mills and the corn. Mills and, and and he showed me all that before he passed away. So with the lyrics and the sound, this is really expressive. How is it? How is this expressive of Cajun culture? Well, the song the songs that I wrote or co-wrote definitely ha have to do with our with our with the culture that I have experienced because they're, they're newer songs. Like I said, I don't tradi consider them traditional right now. But uh, like the old songs are expressive of the hard times mm -hmm. uh, that the Cajuns had to go through. Yeah. Yeah. So survival? To survive, yeah. And, and to, to adapt in a new land. And one of the songs that, that I recorded is called A Land So Far. It was written by a friend of mine, the late Al mm -hmm. and People call him Puk. And uh, he, he called it... Uh, and. He uh, called it uh, and pay e o c to him. Well, actually, I, I named it that. He named it something else, and I, I named it that. And we recorded it together before we passed. And uh, it's about the, the the deportation of the Cajuns in 1755, when they were thrown out and with the tears in their eyes, but the fire and their blood, 
you know, the soil and, and uh, to carry on a tradition in a new land, a, d a completely different land, a hot land, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, so they had to learn to be different farmers, you know. And it's a lot of storytelling, you know, like Cajun music and folk music in general is mostly storytelling. And like you tell a story about how much you love your wife and how you met her. That's a song you wrote, Valerie. Yeah, I have favorites. another song, Valerie, but that we didn't you, do. But yeah, you definitely see in Cajun music that we tell stories. And I think that's something that he does well as a performer, too. And he really, you can really understand what he's saying, too, which is rare. Yeah. I kind of take pride <laughs> yeah. in the pronunciation yeah, yeah, yeah. of the words. Right. Yeah. So, right. so, yeah, so I think that's an important thing. Uh, with our band, we tell good stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all yeah. positive stories too. Yeah. I don't have any negative stories about <laughs> my wife left me or my you know dog right. gone. The truck don't work. <laughs> well, when you have a good life. Yeah, as long as your truck works, you're, you're right. right. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you have a good life, you're expressing what's that? What, that. Yes. And so the songs you guys are going to play are going to be yeah. happy. Yeah. And we met when we were nine years old. We were next door neighbors. So I wrote a song about that, about our lives. When did you know? Oh, we knew right away. I was 10. Yeah, yeah she was 10. Yeah, my, was a lot older when she I was 10 me. when I knew. Oh, so it just took me a year. It took her a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I, I knew walking into the parking lot to meet my wife on a blind date. I knew. Wow. I just, yeah, you see I, Before I even met her. Wow. I wow, that's awesome. Yeah. It so, sure is. I, I mean, and things can happen like that, you know? Yeah. I mean? yeah. So you guys have played all around the world. Yes. Where are some of your favorite places to play? And why? Wow. <laughs> uh, France. France, because I was born there, mm -hmm. because I was an army brat. And so getting to go back as an adult was special. I like playing everywhere. Canada is one of my favorite places to play. In, uh... I like to play where people dance. If there's somebody dance, if there's one couple dancing, oh, I'm yeah. happy. Talk about. Yeah. So there are places that people just don't dance a lot. Huh? They're, they're more are, formal. Yeah, and then right now, of course, Probably. there's yeah. no places to play. You know, with COVID-19, right. right. there's yeah. there's no dancing. There's no restaurants. We we always like to we we normally like to play in the restaurants. Yeah. You know, we don't we stay out of bars. We none of us drink. And we, we just like to play in restaurants so for, for dancers, like she said, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing, how do you get people to dance? Oh, it's the, the automatic. Music, the, the music makes music. Music. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That'll just take care of itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah and sometimes, sure. sometimes they have couples, dance couples, that'll help get the people involved, get the tourists involved. Right. Some friends of ours, Cal and Lou, they come out sometime, and they'll go out there and just grab somebody at their table and just start doing a dance, you know, you know, form a big circle, if right. nothing else, and just start dancing. And yeah. It's the beat keeper right here that gets them to move their feet. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to have a good beat. <laughs> yeah. So this is boom, boom. She's got a time. She's our timekeeper for sure. Yeah. And well, more than that, because I was listening. Oh, you listened to the harmonies. <laughs> yeah, but I, and I was, I was hearing, you were playing some, you know, some of that drumming was really inspired. I mean, you were taking some risks you didn't need to take. <laughs> but you pulled them off, and I thought it was really well, cool. Well, I appreciate that. Because you had this other, like, a, reach, a richer element to that drum. So I, I really appreciate what That's people very nice. do that. I appreciate that. Thank you. So it seems that when you're writing the song, what is that process like? Well, first of all, you uh, you have to have an idea, and uh, that, that's how I do it. Everybody does it different, you know, different ways. It doesn't it doesn't just all of a sudden come to me. I'll start with an idea, and uh, we just had a melody in my head one day. It just, it just went da 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 da, and it, it fit with the syllables fit Valerie. And I said, well, let me let me write a song about <laughs> Valerie. So I wrote the chorus first, right. Valerie, and then then I just went ahead with with the uh, and then threw the lyrics in there. And the verses came later. Why is it so important to sing in Cajun French? Well, just to keep our, our heritage going at least for another generation to come. You know, that's important to me. And one, one of my CDs is called For the Generations to Come. Right. Where I'm handing down CDs to, gen to, my, to future generations. I think it's important because we're proud of where we came from. I know I am. Yeah. I, I'm proud of my ancestors and the work they did to 
overcome the things they had to overcome and, and get us here and that we are even alive right now. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So I'm very proud of our heritage and I'm like Papa, I'd, I'd like to do whatever I can to keep it going. Yeah, and, and we know it's it. going to go away one day, but we want to keep it going for as long as we possibly can. You know. I was well, really lucky; I got to take French in school. Yeah, and it's nice to see the young people. Young yeah. people, you know. It's a playing. happy music, and people enjoy yeah. dancing. Yes, and and we know of even younger people right now that little people that that are, that are starting to pick up instruments, and that's quite cool. Yeah. Well, when I, you know, when I, when I book for the festival. You know, I've seen a lot of bands live, and, I, and I often I'll often look at YouTube people playing live, and I look for people that that obviously have a joy about it. Seeing the joy that you guys had as you played, I thought I'm gonna call them up oh, because there was that was. Thank you. What are some of the happiest moments? And this is for anyone. What's the happiest moment or, or a really happy moment you've had playing music? Anytime my son uh, joined me on stage, uh, I'll second that emotion. Oh yeah. Yep. Same here. Watching him dance while we played too. Yeah, that was yep. fun. Yeah. He would grab a little fiddle and put it in my fiddle case when he was done. He would put it in my fiddle case by my extra fiddle and then when he'd feel like it he'd come pick up the fiddle or the little triangle by the he would mm -hmm. either play fiddle by me or triangle by them. And then uh Yeah, he loved the French music too, he, he really did. He Unfortunately would, he would we lost dances. him at five years old. But uh he he loved music and uh, he he would he would have been right here with us, sitting right here. Oh yeah, oh. having a few words to say. Oh, yeah. He'd be carrying <laughs> the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. He, we wouldn't get a word in. I saw the the wonderful memorial behind you. As you played. What advice do you have for the young people that are beginning to take out this cultural music, this tradition? Listen, get it, get your hand on as much music as you can, different styles, different um, older musicians, uh, recordings and things like that, and just listen to what they're doing, you know, yeah. and listen to what they're saying. And, and listen to the words and try to pronounce them correctly for the next generation to pronounce them correctly. Exactly. Because there's a lot of bands out there that, that pronounce things wrong. Ask for uh, help. Attend Spend as many time with your grandparents. Yeah, attend as many jam sessions mm -hmm. as you can, because that's yeah. a great way to learn. Yeah. It's just to get out there and do it. You can yeah. you can look up stuff online like crazy now. Look look up the words and, and ask for help if you don't know how to pr pronounce oh, it. Yeah. Find one of us. Like I mean, send us a message or or even say it in YouTube. I think they have yeah. videos that pronounce it for you. And you can learn it is to play on YouTube. <laughs> it is important that you know what you're saying to an extent, or know that you're saying it correctly. That way, somebody who does understand the language can understand what you're saying or that the language will survive. Well, this has been a pleasure. Thanks for all us of you. as well. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. it. Just talk Thank with you. you. The music was just inspired. Thank you so Thank much. You. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she wrote. Yep. Make sure you click a like and uh, <laughs> <laughs> like below. and subscribe yeah, down below. Hit that bell. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe Ring the bell right for here, notifications. You, know? <laughs> you guys made that easy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I had no idea. I, you can ask these guys coming down here. I said, what am I going to ask them? I don't know what to say. I don't. I, I, I'm, <laughs> so you formulate formulating questions uh, over there in Watching the sun. You play. <laughs> Watching you play was the thing. No. Yeah. That was a catalyst because I thought, yes, this is a family and they're so happy and and the, they sound so just just like a bedrock traditional thing. That's just got me started. And we're happy because we don't get to play a lot. Yeah. This yeah. When is the last so one? happy because we haven't been playing. Uh, when, did you, when is the last time you guys played? Mother's like, Day. Mother's Day. We wow. played in yeah. February was our last regular gig in yeah. February. And then Randall's opened up temporarily when the phases changed. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to put some tables outside and they got us to go play. On and Day. So that was on Mother's Day. So that was the one time. Well, we Until had been out now. even longer than that because we were in a car accident yeah. in September of 2017. So we had been out all of this time and then uh, COVID hit. So I think yeah. we, that Mother's Day was like the one game that, that well, I was able to play. I heard about the car wreck, but I didn't want to ask. I think yeah. Yeah, just, y'all had just came back that was before the, that COVID, was like, yeah, COVID That was my hit, first yeah. show, was, I think, or second. Or yeah. Yeah. I would have to say it's being able to, well, re recovering and being able to pick up an instrument uh, when I started playing again. Um, it helped out a lot just mm -hmm. having music and 
to not just fall apart. I mean, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. I just, I didn't want to. Yeah, we all took us. So talked far. about something that would be too tender. Stuff. No, yeah. I'm like, thank you. I like, to, I like talking about, talk about. Yeah, yeah I like talking about Zan. Oh, yeah, we'll keep Zan. him alive. Keep, yeah. him, keep yeah, the spirit alive. For sure. Thank you. He's our guardian angel. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Thank you all I so agree. much. All right, y'all. Somehow they knew you're going to say something so wonderful. Oh. They just, they just kept on rolling. <laughs> oh. They really are just kind of amazing, aren't they? She wears a she wears a picture of him every day. Yeah. It's my baby. Day. It's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. Mm-hmm. I see him. Yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we miss him like crazy. He would go to a lot of gigs with us, you know, oh, and yeah. he would yeah, just at, at his at any time. He had the privilege of walking up mm -hmm. on stage and coming with the, by the mic and singing a song with us, you know. And he would too. And we all, he also had his little implements. He had his triangle and his spoons. And he was singing French songs before he was. Uh, it was speaking. The really? second song we played today was his favorite song, yeah. and he could sing every word to oh, yeah. it. Yeah, and it is a wordy it, yeah. song. Like that is one of the most wordy <laughs> songs we play. And he sings every. He would sing every single word. To Even it. It before his he song. could speak right and say his L's, he would say, "What's your favorite?" So I'll say, "What's your favorite song, Dan?" I called him Toopy as a, as a nickname, and he would say, "Gasso way." <laughs> Until before he could even say "Le Gasso Lay." Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that but boy, he could sure say it at the end because he would have been smart as a whip. He was smart oh, yeah. as a whip. Yeah, he we, was we very watched, intelligent. Yeah. He has a video of that song on YouTube. You can go find it. And um, oh yeah, we would be sitting down in the, uh, together in the living room, and if the TV would go on, the first thing we'd say, "Gas away, gas away," <laughs> and we'd have to put it. And we'd watch the video over and over again. He would just dance and sing to the video. It was his favorite because he would see the letters come up, and so then yeah. we would say the letters together. <laughs> See. I also well, we see the uh, wrote a song about Xander Cruz and I named it Xander Cruz and it's got his baby words in there before he could even speak because I would follow him around when, when he you know, would <laughs> babysit mic. him yeah. with a mic and he just saved these words and I'd get and, and, and I'd record them and I had clips and clips and clips and clips you know hundreds of clips and I, I inserted them in the song and it's like he's talking back to him. Yeah, that was going to be something for him when he got yeah, over there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I did that. It was going to be for, for him, us, you know. Yeah. We're lucky to have it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Xander and I can turn this orange into a banana. See people, we have to turn this orange into a banana. Oh okay. yeah. Bye people, I hope you enjoy my magic show. This program has been brought to you by Bushek Production. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Xander, happy birthday to you. Did you make a wish? Did you wish that candle would blow out? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no.